A unique story about an ancient little man and a miner alone awaits you in this video. I will not torment you. Hi friend, you are on the Kurtop channel. Salzburg Parallel Pipette This find was discovered back in 1885 in the Schendorf coal mine, so it has problems with good photographs. The artifact is a small metal object with a unique shape, resembling a parallel pipe. It consists of steel with a small amount of nickel. The item weighed a little, only 765 grams, and you can see the dimensions in the photo above. Scientists have long argued about the origin of the find, because the age of the rocks in which it was discovered was about 40-60 million years. In the course of long discussions, it was decided to consider it a meteorite. However, not all scientists agreed with the decision. There are too many oddities in the artifacts to simply be considered a meteorite. As a result of research, it was found that it is made of three connected parts, which speaks of its artificial creation. The shape of the find was also strange, because it is unique for iron meteorites, especially the central groove of the correct shape. About 50 years ago, they started talking about the artifact again, and new studies showed the complete complete absence of nickel in its composition, which completely ruled out the option of meteoric origin. Since then, the find has been lost, and no more news has been received about it. Excavations at the site of the biblical city of Seir a team of archaeologists, after a year break, continued excavations in the Golan Heights. They are exploring two areas of Beth Saida. The ancient fishing village is mentioned several times in the New Testament as the city where Jesus lived and where he miraculously fed a multitude of people with five loaves of bread and two fish. Archaeologists said the size, wealth, and impressive fortifications indicated that Seir was indeed a major city. After almost 30 years ago, archaeologists identified ancient Beth Bethsaida, masses of Christian pilgrims, visited the city because of its great importance to Christianity. For many years, excavations have continued at Bethsaida. They are also being conducted in the Jordan Park area, northeast of the Sea of Galilee. Over the past two weeks, another discovery has been made. Archaeologists have discovered the ruins of a Roman temple built by Herod's son Philip, which he dedicated to Julia, daughter of Augustus. In the temple, archaeologists have found coins, beads, jugs, and houses keys, as well as a shield belonging to a Roman soldier. The most significant find was a coin dated 35 BC. It was minted in Acre on the occasion of the arrival of Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. A total of 12 such coins were found. Over the years, discoveries of world significance have been made here. Several years ago, a gold coin was found bearing a portrait of the Roman Emperor Anthony Pius, who ruled from AD 138 to 161. Horse head from an ancient Roman statue. The sculptured horse head and other discoveries suggest that the Romans had an amazing relationship with the tribes along the northern borders of the Roman Empire. Archaeologists unearthed a 2000 year old Roman horse head during excavations at a farm in Lachnau, Germany, in 2009. Now, almost 10 years later, the court has concluded that the farmer who owned the land deserves compensation. An incredibly well preserved artifact was dumped at the bottom of a 36 foot well. It was covered with water and protected from the air. Initially, the state paid the farmer just $56,000 for a head found on the land he owned. In July, the Limburg District Court ruled out the farmer was entitled to half of the $1.8 million worth of antiquity. Local authorities now owe the farmer a total of $904,000 in interest. Archaeologists speculate that the bronze head was thrown after an invasion that forced the city's inhabitants to flee in a hurry. The head adorned with golden leaves was dated 9 AD. The discovery of an artifact in a German city bears witness to the scale of the Roman Empire. Experts initially suspected that the head was part of a statue of a Roman general. They found sandals nearby, confirming that the horse originally had a rider. The head made of bronze and plated with gold is more than just an impressive piece of Roman art. Four Roman Horseshoes Early Roman horseshoes found during excavations at a fort near Hadrian's Wall will be on display in the museum. 
Curator of Wendelanza, located next to Hexham in Northumberland, Barbara Burley, noted that it is incredibly rare to find a complete set of four iron horseshoes used by the Romans. The hoof protectors are so well preserved that even the horse's anti-slip protector is visible. Since the Romans were in Britain for 400 to 500 years, a team of archaeologists could dig for the next 150 years and still find Roman treasures. During the years that the Romans were in Britain, they built nine forts on this site. Each time new Roman troops arrived, they covered the remains of the last fort with clay to make a solid foundation for their port. Therefore, things are well preserved. One of the horseshoes was broken, so the kit was thrown into a ditch. Horseshoes date back to 140-180 AD. The oldest fossils in Turkey Bovid fossils, which are approximately 7.5 million years old, have been found in the central Anatolian province of Kayseri, Turkey. Bovids are a biological family of ungulates such as buffaloes, sheep and goats. Archaeological excavations begin near the Cheveril area after Shafar found the fossil. Archaeologists have established that the fossils are one of a kind in Turkey. They are well preserved. The Anatolian region is full of rich fossil strata due to its geographic location. In the future, Kayseri may become the center of such archaeological finds. Archaeologists have already begun work and have discovered amazing things. They found that the fossils are approximately 7.5 million years old, but research on this issue is still ongoing. It is still difficult to say which animal they belong to, perhaps elephants or mammoth. 1000 teeth instead of treasures the discovery of a thousand teeth instead of treasures could not disappoint archaeologists. Moreover, the place where the excavations are carried out does not imply the discovery of fantastic artifacts. Excavations are underway in Melbourne CBD next to Jan and Jackson's pub on Swenson Street. Every day, archaeologists discover objects here that tell more and more about the history of their ancestors. We now know that some had terrible teeth and some smoked opium in glass bonds made from beer bottles. This site was once home to one one of the earliest girls' schools, Nicola Cook's Roxbury Women's Seminary, the Fremonson Hotel, and Powell's Hardware Store. Several dentists used to work here, therefore 100 teeth were found in the pipes and in the ground. The most prominent dentist was J.J. Forster. Newspaper ads praised Forster for being able to, to remove teeth painlessly. But in 2018, Mark Evans, an associate professor at the University of Melbourne School of Dentistry, is rather skeptical about this. The drugs of those years were not as reliable or could have a lasting effect as today lignocaine or articaine. There was no paracetamol, ibuprofen for pain relief after removal, and also there were no antibiotics to fight the infection. Anesthesia was often not used for filling. The dentist drilled his teeth using a vibrating paddle-controlled drill. It was terrible. Dr. Evans has identified the teeth found for archaeologists. He noted that many of the teeth had huge cavities that hurt for years. Bavarian Princess Skeleton Archaeologists have discovered in Bavaria the remains of a young woman, 18-25 years old, who died around 500 AD. Her grave goods included a glass bead necklace, a gold necklace, a rock crystal ball, as well as several brooches and a vessel. According to researchers, she belonged to the local nobility and was probably a princess. After the fall of the Roman Empire in the south of modern Germany and the surrounding territories, the Baver tribe began to form. But for the first time in written sources, it was mentioned only in the middle of the 6th century. Presumably, the Bavers formed on the basis of the remnants of the Celtic and Roman population, part of the Alemannic and Frankish tribes, as well as other Germanic mercenaries who were in the service of Rome. Although there are other hypotheses according to which the Bavers are considered migrants from Bohemia, archaeologist Alois Spillader noted that the girl belonged to the local nobility and can rightfully be called a princess. The early medieval necropolis, according to researchers, began to be used around 500 AD. This dating is confirmed by a vessel similar in shape to the late antique specimens, but decorated in the Germanic style. Next to him was a brooch in the shape of a bird, which also confirms the age of the grave. The girl clearly belonged to the elite of her society. In the area of her neck was a rich glass bead necklace as well as a gold choker. In the area of the belt, archaeologists have found a rock crystal ball, which is usually interpreted as an element of the costume of an unmarried young woman, as well as an Almadin fibula. Dwarf mummy from San Pedro Mummified bodies are found quite often. They are always of great interest to the public. 
I notice that there are often some mysteries associated with the mummies found, and sometimes there are several secrets at once. With Pedro, which will be discussed, this is exactly the story. The body was found in the San Pedro Mountains, Wyoming, USA, in 1932. And it all happened like this. Two guys named Mine and Carr were looking for gold in the state. They wanted to get rich. Men were engaged in honest and hard work. After all, it was necessary to find and extract gold. And that was not easy task in those years. Cecil Maine and Frank Carr were not very lucky in their affairs. They found only grains of gold and sand. But as one friend of mine says, you shouldn't be afraid when everything is bad. You should be on your guard when everything is too good. Luck seemed to turn to face the man. Carr and Mine spotted a gold mine in the rock. It was necessary to use explosives to get to the precious metal. The man blew up the rock. Whether they got the gold, history is silent. This indeed then became not very important. Mine and Carr found a small room, about one and a half meters wide and high and four and a half meters long. There was no gold and in the room there was a dwarf, somewhat resembling a man, not alive of course. It was a mummy. The dwarf sat cross-legged. His height in a standing position obviously should have been around about 35-40 centimeters. The find was handed over to scientists who did, among other things, an x-ray study. It turned out that the dwarf, who was christened Pedro, in honor of the mountains where he was found, was a man, or at least a humanoid creature. He had a skeleton like ours, internal organs, and so on. True, the spine was damaged, as was one of the collarbones. Establish the approximate time when this creature lived, 1700 AD. Who Pedro was during his lifetime, there is still no consensus on this issue. Some believe that the gold diggers have found a child with anencephaly, others that an adult was found. Scientists, among other things, found that the creature has 32 teeth in the mouth, which is not typical for children. There was also an extravagant version. Car and Mine allegedly found the little man mummy. There were legends about these creatures in some Indian tribes. It was said that small and very spiteful people live in the mountains who do not like people, poisoned arrows at those who are near. At one time, Pedro was in pharmacy in Wyoming. The mummy was shown to the visitors of the establishment. Then Pedro was bought by businessman Goodman from the same state. According to some reports, the mummy was later resold to a wealthy man from New York named Wadler. Nobody knows what happened to Pedro next. It's a pity. It is possible that modern studies of biological material were able to provide answers to the question of who this same Pedro was. Miniature Modus Bird Figurine a miniature bird figurine discovered in Linjing, Henan Province, China, dating back 13,500 years ago, is now the oldest known example of Chinese art. Carved from black and bone, this Paleolithic bird figurine may not look particularly impressive, but it is roughly 13,500 years old, making it the oldest example of three-dimensional art from East Asia. Its surface shows evidence of the use of various types of tools, indicating that the artist used well-established carving techniques. It is also unique in that the bird sits on a pedestal, suggesting that it is a part of a previously unknown artistic tradition. Rare structures in the ancient city of Dalishe. Archaeologists have investigated a rare bathing structure in southeastern Turkey during the Roman Empire and a magnificent Christian basilica of late antiquity. People left the city as a result of wars and economic crisis. A new period of prosperity began under Christian patronage. The basilica was built. The city that initially attracted attention and became rich thanks to the sanctuary of the Roman god Jupiter Dolishin became a bishopric. A team of archaeologists has been conducting research since 2001 in ancient Dalishe. Dalishe is a perfect example of the cultural, political, and religious development of a city in ancient Syria. The city first changed when it became part of the Roman Empire. The bathhouse shows how Roman customs were adopted and shaped the cityscape. The bathing room was of considerable size. It covered an area of about 2,000 square meters. The bath has a sequence typical of Roman times. First there are cold, then warm and hot bath. A room of about 150 square meters with a the pool is now open, as well as part of the underfloor hidden system. The finds, like the mosaics, date the object from the 2nd to the 3rd century AD. When the bathhouse fell into disrepair during the Christianization process, the building material of lime and marble was processed in a large lime kiln and then used for new buildings. The discovery of the church is a very important find, as very few church buildings in the city have so far been explored by archaeologists in the region, which is of great importance for the study of early Christianity. 
Christianity. Finds around the church indicate that it was destroyed by an earthquake in the 7th century. The city itself was finally abandoned in the 12th century. Dig in a tunnel for 38 years. He dug a passage more than two kilometers long, and all the locals thought he was crazy. It turned out that not everything is so simple. William Schmidt, nicknamed the Mole, lived in a small mining town near Mount El Paso. This is in the Mojave Desert, where in addition to scorpions, sand, and rattlesnakes, there was a bulk of gold. The locals mined it, everyone except Schmidt. This weird little man came to Mount El Paso every day and dug his own tunnel, day after day, year after year, without days off and and holidays. When asked why he was doing this, William replied, This is the shortest path. You will understand soon enough. This soon stretched for almost 40 years. During this time, Schmidt was overwhelmed by the breed. Several times he was close to death. After one such incident, he became concerned about safety and seriously strengthened the walls of the tunnel, although this also took a long time. He even laid rails to transport the rock, and he continued to work hard. At first they made fun of him. Then they decided that he was just crazy and then they left alone. The locals had enough of their own to do. They only occasionally whispered among themselves and built theories about what this strange man lives on and how he buys tools. And one fine day, Schmidt did not return to the town. Then several days passed. Then the residents decided to find out where he had gone. Led by the sheriff, they walked down the tunnel. It was dark, gloomy, and a little eerie. After walking several hundred meters, they waved their hands and returned to the surface. Schmidt was recorded as missing and forgotten until recently, no one else descended into the tunnel. Only new professional freight forwarders decided to go along this route and were amazed. It wound 2,048 meters under the mountain, and all this was done by one single person. There were no remains there, and on the walls of the tunnel there is a clear sign of a gold mine. Most likely, the digger still found gold, completely depleted the vein, and then disappeared. And then it became clear Schmidt's new answer about the shortest path. It turned out that this was the path to wealth, and you can get information wealth on our channel. To do this, you just need to subscribe and click on the bell. And those who write a kind comment will be successful in the near future. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!